What's going on, everybody? It's Jamel Gibbs, your family-oriented entrepreneur. Welcome to another podcast episode. This is the Business and Investing Podcast, where you learn all things business and investing related. Today, we're going to play Monopoly, right? So as you guys know, I love to talk about wholesaling real estate. I love to talk about buy and hold real estate. The next level from buying and holding real estate would be apartments, and then you start getting into hotels, from that point forward, right? So you can get into boutique boutique hotels. You can get into, you know, uh, larger brand hotels. There's a lot of different things that you can do in the hotel industry in relation to your real estate investing business. And I am not in the hotel business. So I wanted to bring on a special guest because this is something that I'm obviously looking into uh, over the next couple of years, I didn't realize how simple it can be to get into the hotel business. Um, it's not like investing into apartments from from my understanding. Mm. Uh, but I didn't realize the type of financing, the type of funding that you can get, uh, kind of similar to self-storage and things like that. But I didn't realize that you can do certain things in order to be able to get a hotel. Hotels are treated more like a business mm -hmm. in addition to real estate. Mm -hmm. So... That's why I wanted to uh, bring on our special guest. She's probably the only person that I've ever seen teaching how to get into the hotel arena. So if you're brand new in real estate, listen up. If you've been in the business for a while and you're looking to take your business to a completely different level and play Monopoly with real money and real life, then this is the podcast that you need to listen to. Because we're going to drop some bombs today that you guys can not only take, uh, take into to your mind, but also apply into your life. The information that you receive today is not about uh, taking any information. It's about what you do with the information that's going to allow you to be able to go from where you are to where you want to go. So we're going to talk about some important things that you need to implement in order to be able to get into the hotel industry. And in order to do that, I've invited our special guest. Davon Reeves, what's going on today? Hey, what's going on, Jamil? How you doing? I'm doing great. I can't complain. Hey, why don't you tell everybody a little bit about yourself? Sure, absolutely. Well, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Davon Reeves. I am the president and founder of the Vaughn Group. We are a hotel consulting and investment firm. I am also the co-owner of three hotels across two different states, as well as I recently launched a crowdfunding platform uh, where you can invest in commercial real estate. And of course, you can invest and raise capital for hotels. I actually got my start off um, in the hotel industry working as a front desk agent about 15 years ago. Let me let yeah. me ask you this. So when you when you first started in the hotel industry, were you in real estate already or were you no. mm -mm. totally green to hotels, totally green to real estate and just jumped into the hotel industry from there? Oh my gosh, I wish it was so much information to real estate that I didn't know. And I had access to it. I just didn't know about it. Right. Gotcha. Like I had, um, cause it wasn't talked about a lot at the dinner table. Right. Like mm -hmm. my grandma, she owned her home. My mom owned her home, but that was just it. It was like, you just, so that was normal, but it wasn't the really understanding the investing aspect. And I had family members who were really big in it, but they didn't like to tell anybody. Gotcha. Like so, gotcha. so once I got into once they realized that I was in a hotel investing space, then they was like, Oh, Devon, this is what you do. I'm like, What? Now you wait to tell me? Kind of thing. So, <laughs> um, yeah, so like when I started as a front desk agent, I didn't know that you could own a hotel. Like I just it just it just when it dawned on me, like you can own it. Because at the time yeah, the it? hotel that I worked at, mm -hmm. um, Hyatt, um, because I was started off at the Hyatt Regency Atlanta, Hyatt owned the the hotel. So I just thought our brands, um, you know, they, they, they own their individual hotels. Yeah. Because this is something that, you know, obviously people don't talk about. This is right. kind of like a, a hidden, it's, it's almost like a secret, yeah. secret industry that a lot of people want to know about, but right. we just don't know about. We don't, right. we don't even know the first steps are to, to, to right. be able to do this. So yeah. you were brand new, never bought any real estate before, but you jumped right into the hotel business. Is that, was that the case? Yeah, yeah, that's the case. And um and I wasn't even gung ho on home ownership because mm -hmm. my my grandma she left me her houses. So I didn't even have that 
hustle. You know, like some people are like, oh, I got to do this. I got to do that to get right. my first house. It was like I had my, you know, she left me my first house when I was two. You know what I mean? So I didn't have that, that you know, that hustle you know, that everybody know. else got. Yeah, yeah you know right. what I mean? So yeah, it was what it's all know, about. So exactly. So I did the exact same. Of course, I did the exact same thing for my son. Right. I bought him mm-hmm. a house, um, you know, when he was two, you know, so doing that, that same thing. But um, I'm going to teach retention wealth a little bit differently. How about that? I'll make sure he understands gotcha. investing. <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha. So and the reason I ask that is because there are some people that's listening to us who are brand new. And, yeah. you know, obviously people's circumstances may be different. Right. You know, um, but I, I wanted to emphasize that because I believe that you don't need to have a a, 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 a ton of real estate bank. knowledge yeah. in order to be able to do this. You know what I mean? No, you you, you don't. But you do need to um, have a understanding of investing um, because hotels are very capital intensive. So I talk about there's four different ways to hotel ownership or hotel investing. Right. Mm-hmm. So the first way I, I talk about is through a uh, crowdfunding, um, hence why I created a crowdfunding platform, right? That's more of a passive investment route. So for those who don't know what passive means, passive investing or limited partnership, meaning that it's a low risk, um, you're you're just a silent partner, you're just investing mm-hmm. and somebody mm-hmm. else is managing the asset. So you can do that through crowdfunding where you can invest um, directly into the asset using a platform. Uh, you can also invest in hotels using through a REIT, which stands for Real Estate Investment Trust. That's probably the least expensive way to get in. You can get in like at twenty dollars, but again, now if you invest at twenty, I want to put this disclosure out: you're not going to be a millionaire tomorrow because you know some people, That's especially right. on social media, all you need is five dollars, and then they don't <laughs> tell you that you're not going to be a millionaire tomorrow. So I'm saying, you know, whatever the lower the amount you invest, the lower your dividends will be. But it's a way to get you started, right? At least right. it's a way to get you started, and so you can understand it and you can grow from there. Um, you can also invest. Um, uh, passively through uh, private investing, um, mm-hmm. which is how I raise my capital through uh, with my previous ho- with my current hotels that I have now, where people invested directly in the asset and they d- invested directly with me. So those returns are typically a lot higher because you're investing in the direct asset as opposed to a REIT. You're investing in a portfolio. It's like you're investing in a stock, right? And then the fourth way to become a to invest or own a hotel is actually becoming a sponsor or becoming an active investor, which I am considered an active investor because I put, you know, help put the deal together along with my partners. Uh, we raise capital. We're, you know, talking to the brands, dealing with the financing. Uh, so a lot of, a, a lot of risk, right? A lot of work. Um, but you need, everyone needs a, it's, it's like a team. Like when you were in school, you have the leader and then you have the people who, who work and put together. And you have some people who just don't want to work. Right. How many people out there? Look, I'm not trying to do all this extra work, but I got some extra money. Is there a way that I can make my grant, my money grow from go for me? And that's the, the 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 passive route. And that's I mean, that's just how the world works. Right. You have somebody that's putting a deal together, doing all the work. And then you have somebody who has additional capital or OPM, other people's money. And they invest it mm-hmm. that way. Yeah. So, so quick question. What type of mindset shift did it take going from an employee of a, of a hotel to starting to look? At ownership of a hotel? Um, I started look I started joining so I've always kind of been a go getter. I've always been mm-hmm. competitive. I've always have a, the leadership capabilities that's just been in me. Um, I guess I was born with it because I don't like my family, they're not really like I, I don't want to say like like leaders, leaders, but in my immediate family, it was they're, they're worker bees. I mean, that's just how I was raised to be a worker bee. My dad was a retired fireman. My my grandma was a retired nurse. Um, you know, entrepreneurship wasn't wasn't like it wasn't taught to me, right? And mm-hmm. so I started joining different organizations. One is called the American Hotel Lodging Association under Thirty Gateway. So the American Hotel Lodging Association is one of the largest um, hotel associations in the, in the country. And um, with that, or by joining that organization, I was able to be a, around other people who are my age. But this one was a little different. Not only were they di- from different cultures and different backgrounds, like these folks were like owning hotels. Well, they inherited hotels. So just like I was telling you before, I inherited a house at two. Some of my counterparts were inheriting hotels at two. Gotcha. So that was the light bulb. I was like, 
wait, you can own a hotel? Like, I didn't know it was possible, <laughs> right? Like, you can develop one? Like, we're the same age? Like, how is this possible? And so that's, I mean, literally, that's just when it just switched. That's just when a light bulb, it just, it just went off. And it's, I've been, I didn't know how to do it. It wasn't a podcast like yourself. It wasn't a Davon Rees, like, hey, mm-hmm. let me, let me show you the ropes. Let me walk you through it. It wasn't like a book. And I kept asking people and no one knew. Obviously, there were there were some obstacles that you faced. What, was it an easy transition going from employee into home hotel ownership? What were some of the obstacles you faced? I couldn't get a job. So I couldn't mm. transition from operations to what you call the transactional side of hotels, which means, mm. you know, selling the hotel, investing in the hotel, or the ownership side. And because I didn't go to school for real estate, I didn't go to school for finance, I didn't have that investment background or economics. And so that was the hard part. Mm. Um, So what I did, I created my own pathway, my own journey, and I took a non-paid internship. And I took a non-paid internship and I worked for a consulting firm. And I knew, I knew if I had this experience on my resume, that it would be easier for me to get onto the transactional side of hotel ownership. And I was right. It paid off. Um, it was hard because I had to work there in the morning from 9 to 12. And I had to work at the Hyatt from 1 to whenever I left. Yeah. So let's simplify this. Let's simplify the process for, for our listeners, right? So what does it take to get into the hotel industry? Why don't we put that in, let's say, five steps? What, what are some of the things that our listeners can do to get started to becoming a hotel owner? You need money. I'm not going to so say. So how much money are we talking about? What, like what, what exactly do we need? So it depends on the deal. Just like it depends on you buying your first house, right? And every market mm-hmm. is different, okay? So if you're trying to do something in New York, it's a little different if you're trying to do something in North Carolina, right? The price of the hotel is going to be a little different. So I would say if you could come in with at least six figures just mm-hmm. to kind of start off with, uh, you probably close to if your ownership group let me specify this let me break this down your Mm -hmm. ownership group so let's say you let's say jamil you got a hundred thousand right and you see this deal that's five million right so the down payment is like what one million okay 20 20 Mm percent right so you got a hundred you know you call up your your homies and you like you call your boys and be like yo i found this deal to steal you know we can get an sba loan Nine of y'all got a hundred. We in for we in for a million. So that's mm-hmm. that's a way that you could get in, right? Um, starting off small. Uh, starting off with the economy hotel. Starting off with limited service hotels. So limited service hotels are hotels that has um they don't have a um a, a full full restaurant like a Hampton Inn or something. Or starting off really start off with like economy or extended stay. So like start off with like a micro tail or a red roof inn. Or Super 8, those type of hotels are really good to start. To uh, So working with the broker. So let me start off from the beginning. He said break it five steps. So the first step is to find a deal, right? Well, no, take that back. The first step is you need to be capitalized. So your credit mm-hmm. profile, you need to have, either you have to have money or somebody in your ownership group has to have money. And somebody has to have good credit or excellent credit. What, like what type of credit score? If you can have something in the 700s, I think that would be great. Okay. Yeah. So 700 credit score. Yeah. Um, at least 20 percent down based on the price. Yeah. What's the average price of a starter hotel? I mean, you can find. I know somebody that's about to buy a hotel for two million dollars. So it just really depends on the market. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It depends so it on the be, market. So be, let's talk about. Let's just say less than five million. Less than gotcha. let, less than five million. Yeah. And mm-hmm. then you can take advantage of the SBA seven A loan. Right. So let's just say less than five million. So less than five million. Uh, then the second thing is after you figure out your credit profile, then you start looking for deals, right? Mm-hmm. Work with hotel brokers. Work. You want to work mm-hmm. with someone who has experience in hotels, who's gone to the closing table. There are a lot of brokers. I'm not knocking my, my real estate brokers on, that's listening. I'm not knocking y'all. But if y'all never close on the hotel. It's different. It's, it's different because you don't understand the underwriting. You don't understand the business aspect. You don't understand the valuation. It's complicated. And so for my folks who are trying to get in, that's cool. You probably got your main broker that you work with on all your your residential deals, probably even all on your apartment complex deals. You need to find a new one for your hotel deal because you need to find someone that specializes in that. And a lot of people say, oh, I can do it. If they haven't closed, gone to the closing table a couple times, because the first time could have been the flu. 
But if they mm-hmm. haven't gone to the the closing table a couple times, I'm sorry, they probably are peeps, but you need to find someone who's really experienced in that. And so also you- they can help y'all find off market deals too. Yeah, so so let's talk about that. How how do you go out first and find a hotel broker? Like what's the best the easiest and best way to do that right now? So shout I'm always going to give a shout out to my brother in the industry. My uh, shout out to Omari Head. He's on Instagram at um Hip Hop Hotel Broker. So he's on Instagram. So he's a ho- he's a black hotel broker. He's probably one of the few black hotel brokers. He's transacted over Seven hundred million dollars in hotels, which equates to over one hundred and seventy hotels. So he know how. So that's what I'm. That type of volume, he knows what he's talking about when it comes to this to that space. I'm gonna make sure I leave his uh, info in the description box of the video as well. Definitely Absolutely. appreciate that. So, so and then you can just Google mm-hmm. hotel brokers, Marcus and Milchap, um, Hunter Hotel Advisors, uh, their hotel brokers. There's a lot of different hotel brokers that you can look into, but before you talk to them. They're going to want to know your investment criteria, right? So which brand you looking for, you know, the location, what's your deal size? Meaning, can you, are you 5 million or less? Are you economy or limited service? So really getting that education before you, cause they're going to ask you those specific questions and I want you all to be prepared. So that way they, for one, can send y'all deals and two, give y'all a call back. Right. And we'll, and we'll talk about how you guys can get more education uh, in, in, in just a little bit. Um, obviously, there's only but so much we could cover on a podcast, but this is something that you, you, you need to educate yourself on before you right. really start taking action. But again, as we mentioned before, you want to take action once you understand what you're doing. Right? right. So if you were looking for off market deals, what's one simple way that our listeners can a hotel do broker, hotel broker off market. Yeah. Right. So whether you on market or off market, go to a hotel broker. Yeah, go to because they have access to them. So there's no MLS for hotels, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, people come in my inbox all the time with I got off market deals. Unless you are the owner of the hotel or the broker, mm-hmm. I don't pay you any mind. So because it's it's not off market deals. It just the people keep talking off market deals are the best, but it just depends on what your criteria and it just depends on the deal, right? Because mm-hmm. sometimes when it goes out to market, it may not be the best deal because they 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 tried to shop it around off market, it didn't work. And so, you know what I mean? So anyway, that's Got a it, whole nother right. podcast discussion, right? But Absolutely. yeah, work, just work, especially if it's your first time, just work with a hotel broker. So that's the, the second step, right? So the first step I mm-hmm. said finance is find a deal. Then the third step would be to actually analyze the deal, right? So after you find a hotel, so you need to analyze the deal, you need to underwrite a deal to make sure it makes sense, right? So then you, after you analyze the deals and make sense, then you submit the offer, If the offer is accepted, meaning you submit the LOI, which stands for letter of intent or submitting Mm -hmm. the offer. If it's accepted, doesn't it sound like, because it's real estate, right? People overcomplicate. They're like, Devon, what do I do? I'm like, have you bought a house before? And they're like, yeah. Have you bought an investment property before? They're like, yeah. All right, then. You know what's so interesting about this? It it sounds like, because I, I buy businesses as well, in addition to real estate, right? So same way you buy real estate, you could buy a business. Mm -hmm. Um. And this sounds exactly like that. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So if you're, when, you know, just to take a step back, when you're analyzing deals, what are some of the things that you're looking for? So you want to understand the KPIs, right? So um, so hotels is an operating business sitting on real estate, right? Mm-hmm. So not only are you evaluating the real estate, but really you're evaluating the business. So the business nice. is what makes a hotel a hotel, right? So how is that hotel performing? So you need to understand occupancy, which is the percentage of rooms occupied. You need to understand ADR, which stands for average daily rate. You also need to understand REVPAR. REVPAR is revenue per available room, which is the which is the calculation is you're basically just uh, multiplying occupancy times ADR, right? So really understanding those metrics, understanding NOI, the cap rates in hotels are typically a little bit higher. Um, so you're analyzing the deal to see if it see basically if you can cover debt service pay yourself. And if you have investors, pay your investors. So if you can do all that and that makes sense. And then also it, it just depends on your investment thesis, right? You can do value add hotels, just like you do value add and flipping houses and mm-hmm. the bird right. method and all that. You can do the same thing with hotels, but it's just based off what you're trying to do. If you're trying to mm-hmm. develop, which I don't recommend the first time hotel owners, um, you're trying to develop, if you're trying to buy, if you're trying to renovate, you know, whatever you, whatever you're trying to do, then that's how you, that's how you, that's how you would analyze a deal. 
So I'll give you a quick example for a value add. Let's say you see an independent hotel, right? And it has, I don't know, like 50, 100 rooms. I'm just making this up. Independent hotel and you can and you can put a brand on it. So let's say you buy that hotel for a million dollars. Again, I'm just making this up. You buy that hotel for a million dollars, you put a brand on it. Like I'm just going to shout out Choice because Choice, they have a program for folks, for uh, for, for black folks to, to buy hotels, right? So let's say you put a Choice brand or a Wyndham. Both of them do. Both Choice and Wyndham, they both have programs for black people to uh, get in a hotel ownership, right? And you put those different brands on it. You just probably added another million dollars to the valuation. All you did was just slap the brand on it. That's so all you So it's better to buy the brand rather than trying to start your own chain. Yes. Oh my gosh. I get so many people come to me and they want to start their own brand. We have a hundred brands in the, in, in, in hotels. We don't need mm-hmm. another one. Every brand you could think <laughs> of is probably been created. Like I've seen mm-hmm. every, they have art museum brands, treehouse brands, healthy brands they probably gonna new the one i haven't heard yet was a vegan hotel brand but it's probably out there too but mm. the point i'm trying to make is we don't need another brand okay work with brands that are existing is easier to get financing is already it's just proven a lot right i mean just think about you jamel when you you and your family y'all probably go to, y'all go look for hotels what are you looking for i'm looking for a brand you looking for a brand whatever so what's your favorite brand is it hilton hyatt marriott what is it I like the Westin. I like the Hilton. I like the Hyatt. It just depends on where I'm at. Right. So you're like, okay, you know what? I know this brand. You may, mm-hmm. somebody else may have, you know, the Gibbs Hotel brand. You ain't never heard mm-hmm. of that. No. Nah, you like, I, ain't I don't know. know. <laughs> you check the reviews and you like, they still got good reviews, but you know what? Let me go ahead and say it this Hyatt because I'm a, a Hyatt, you know, member. So let me just go ahead and just, and, and just stay with them so I can get, I get, see what I'm saying? You see what I'm, yeah. that brand loyalty? So that's what you're I'll paying. be honest. Even me, like, I, you know, when I'm looking for hotels, I don't like, and I have nothing against like, what I'm about, you know, the hotel I'm about to mention. But, like, if it says, like, Economy Lodge, I'm not staying there, you know. Right. Um, but that's a good one to I'm own, looking though. for, huh? That's a good one to own at Econo Lodge. That's a good one to I'm own. I'm sure it's a good one to own. But, like, for me, when I'm looking at, you know, hotels oh, that I want to stay in yeah. and and I'm have an way. experience, I'm looking at some of the higher brands. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm not. But yeah, I'm sure I'm, that I'm, those are tougher to get into as well. They are more capital intensive to get into. Mm-hmm. I know people who want to own a Ritz Carlton. I'd be like, you, you know, good luck with that. Yeah, yeah. Ritz good, Carlton good is another good one. Um, so good Economy Lodge, you saying is a good one? That's a great one to own first starting off. Great. Really? One. Oh yeah. Well, and I if you never and thought. If, and if, if for my folks who would come from the multifamily world. A great type of hotel to own are extended stay hotels. Extended mm-hmm. stays, they have the kitchens in it. They have, you know, it's like a sweet people who stay in at least seven, seven days, five to seven days. Some folks stay there to a month. From a cash flow perspective, that's more in line with what you're used to doing, right? And then from an exit strategy perspective, you can turn it into senior living, student housing, you know, apartments. It just makes more sense. The labor lot, the labor model was leaner. So for my folks who are multifamily or apartment complexes and you're looking to get into hotels, going into the extended stay model. So choice, they have Wood Springs, Wyndham. I can't think what Wyndham has, but those are different brands that you can look into um, as far as. The, oh, I think I think Wyndham is like Hawthorne. The reason why I'm saying these two brands, because those are the only two brands that has a dedicated program for for African for black hotel ownership. Like they're literally giving they're literally giving out checks for black people to buy hotels. So now there's not an excuse. First it's like, oh we don't have access to capital. You got access to capital. Oh we don't have knowledge. You got someone like me, you know, on your podcast dropping gems. So now it's not an excuse. Right? Mm-hmm. The Indian community, they own over 60% of the hotels in America. Wow. You know how they started off? Owning those econo lodges and super eights and coming together. And now mm-hmm. they own over 60%, right? So why can't we do the same thing as a, a, a as the black community, right? So you're saying is, there's nothing wrong with owning a super eight. It's going to stay full. Economy large, same large, same thing. Um, start where you can and then build from there. That's, I mean, that's just like investing in real estate. Your mm-hmm. first house, your first, yep. think, think about your first deal. It probably wasn't the best one, you know. It was, no, probably, it was in the hood. Like, it was in the hood. You know yeah. what I mean? It was like, <laughs> hey. I'm just getting, I'm, I'm learning. You made some mistakes. Like, you know, God knows what happened to your tenants. You know what I mean? You, you know, you was like, whoo, 
This is a lot. <laughs> but as sure. you progress, you that first house, that first deal sets you up for your second, then That's your right. third, then your fourth, and then now you're a multifamily, and then you're doing this. Yep. So like you're saying, monopoly in real life with real money. That's how you do it. Same thing with hotels. You started with one hotel, two, three, four, five. Now you got 12, six, 30 hotels. And now you can own stuff like a Ritz Carlton or right. a full service Marriott. But you start off with the smaller, you start off with, if you use that model. That makes perfect sense. Mm -hmm. yeah, that makes perfect sense. So, so we, we, we get funded first. Yeah. We contact the broker. We find, we analyze the deal. After you analyze it, then what was the next step again? You you, you submit the offer. In the LOI. Yep. So you make an offer and then you close the deal at the end of the day. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. If you can do all, go through the due diligence, you know, finding the management company, uh, which is a part of your thesis. So it, if you, so depending on how you are as an investor. So mm -hmm. my thesis, in order for me to get a hotel, I have to bring on a third party management company because how my life is set up. I can't physically be in a day-to-day -day business. Some people gotcha. are different. Some people, they want to be there. They want to check in guests. That is great for you. I've checked in enough guests. I'm fortunate I can't do that anymore. It feels right? good so doing I, that first, right? <laughs> right, right. Now, push come to shove. If I got to check in the guests, that means it's really bad. But <laughs> if I have to, I will. If I got to clean rooms, I got to do what I got to do because it's my hotel. So if I got to okay. do it, I got to do it. Mm -hmm. But how my life is set up, I bring in a management company. We pay them you know, the percentage is typically like three to four percent. You pay them every month and they handle all the other stuff. So my folks who are getting into the hotel space, if you're looking at a con now economy lodge, sometimes it doesn't or those economy hotels, they don't really warrant management companies. You just probably need like a really good general manager that, mm. that can handle that stuff for you. But you want to get your systems and also these brands because they want you to succeed and buy more hotels. They have programs where they can train your people as well. So you Not go through all of that due to, during the due diligence. If, if every, and then you raise capital if you have to during your due diligence pays. You know, you're getting your appraisals done. You're getting your inspections done. Just like a house, right? You got to get an mm -hmm. appraisal. The difference with hotels, they don't have to be bank. Is that the bank? They don't make the re recommendations. You do want to work with an appraisal company for hotels. Um, those are a little bit more expensive. Um, you do have to get an inspection. It's called a property condition assessment. You have to get one of those. Those are a little bit more expensive to do. But you do all of that during the due diligence phase. You work. You pay the the franchise fees and everything with the brand. So you, again, you do all that during the due diligence phase. And then if, if everything works out, then you go to the closing table and you change ownership. So is there a certain formula that you use in order to be able to uh, know if you're paying too much or not, if you're getting a good deal uh, on a hotel? Yeah, you do like multiples, like you do equity. You could do like gotcha. equity multiples from a return standpoint. Like, okay, is there's a 2X, a 3X multiple um, room room revenue multiple, meaning like, you know, if the you buying a hotel, you know, for like, I don't know. Four million, and then the 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 revenue that's coming in the hotel is two million. So that's the two x multiple when it comes to room revenue, right? Mm -hmm. um, so then the C is how long would it take you to pay it back? Um, another thing that you could do to check to see if you're you know you're overpaying, just checking the comps, you know, in the market. Again, that's why it's good to have a good broker. Broker, right? right. To see, and also the biggest thing is, can you pay your can you pay the bank back? Like, would it mm -hmm. be enough? To pay the bank back. Also understand like dirt service coverage ratio, but would it be enough money mm -hmm. for you to pay the bank back, pay yourself, and then, you know, well, excuse me, pay, I'm doing it in the right order. The bank, your investors, and then yourself, right? You want to take care of your investors, right? So in that particular model, will that be enough for you to sustain? And that's how you'd be able to tell if it's a good deal or not. I got you. I got you. Yeah. There's a lot of information. I'm sure there's a lot of nuances that you got to understand in order to I be able to lot. really be effective with this, right? You covered a lot, definitely. Um, but I'm sure it goes, you went wide. I'm sure you can go, you know, deeper in order to be able deeper. to really yeah, grasp yeah. it. Yeah. And in order for, for everyone to do that, I'm going to just put it out there. I, I think that you guys need to check out Devon's, uh, uh, Devon's information. Um, where can they find... Uh, more access to, to information like this in order to be able to uh, get started. So my website, the Vaughn group, T H E V O N N E G R O U P.com. Also have a book, how to buy a hotel. It's on Amazon. 
And I actually have an upcoming. So this year, I'm super excited. So this is the fifth year of me being an entrepreneur. Congratulations. Full-time. Thank you. So on October 25th is when I got my, is when it became incorporated. So that's like the actual date for me. Cause you know, you ain't that's official to become incorporated. So right. I got incorporated on October 25th, uh, 2017. And so this year marks my fifth year of the Vaughn group. So thank you all for all of my, all of my, all of your support. I'm hosting a free masterclass on October 25th at 7:30, where what I talked about before, I'm going e- further in detail, you know, breaking down what that ownership thesis looks like, breaking down the questions that you need to ask. Like, I've never done this before for free. It's always paid. Mm-hmm. So this is free. I'm doing it one time only. And I don't even do a lot of courses too much, too. So one time only, October 25th at 7.30 p.m. A webinar where I literally walk through the entire breakdown of buying a hotel and for the folks who just want to invest, I'm going to walk um, walk you through how to passively invest in a hotel, too. I'm going to make sure I link all of that in the description box for you guys. Now, if you're watching this after October 25th, um, you know, the, I'm sure the, those links are going to redirect to a different website. But uh, make sure you check out Devon's website in the description box as well um, for more information on how you can get started in the hotel industry, really five simple steps that we covered today. Yeah. Right, we went over the financing part. There's a lot of different ways uh, to pull money. Um, yep. You can use private investors, like Devon said, which is probably going to be one of the easiest ways. So you and your friends. You use business. Have you ever right? used hard? Have you ever used hard money? Um, you can. It's just expensive. You can. Expen- yeah, it is. It's, it just, is it's just expensive. And then you mm-hmm. probably would do that for the smaller deals. Mm-hmm. You can use business credit. Business credit you know, is another way. Yep. You can use your retirement. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, not your retirement. You know, your investor's retirement. Yeah. To invest, uh, you know, brokerage accounts, lines of credit. Some people use the equity out of their homes. I wouldn't recommend that. Depending and then fund on, the like, rest with the SBA, pretty much. Mm-hmm. Yep. And right. there are other, and also you can work with like community banks too. The smaller mm-hmm. the deal, sometimes the community banks will work with you. Um, but once you get into larger deals, you you know, you work, get into the capital markets, but that's a whole nother story. But for first time, I would recommend 5 million or less. Save up some money, build some money relationships, build up your credit, right? You yeah. build up your credit score. You'll have all the money you need in order to be able to get into the business. Then you go out there, you find yourself a good broker. I'm going to leave the recommendation for, um, Devon's friend. Uh, maybe I'll have him on a podcast soon. Well, that's something that we could talk about, but make sure you, I'll, I'll make sure I'll link his information in the description box as well. Once you're right, reach out to him. And once you reach out to him, make sure you learn how to analyze the deals. Now, this is where Devon's her, her course, her book and all of that stuff is going to come into play. Uh, you need to learn how to analyze this stuff to make to make sure that you're getting the right deal. So then you go ahead, you analyze the deal, you submit your offer, you close out the transaction. Now you're a hotel owner. Right. So um, make sure you check out the links in the description box. Very, very important. Uh, This is time sensitive uh, when we're uh, thinking about the October uh, webinar that she's going to have. If this is after October and you're watching this, make sure you still check out the links to her website to see how you can get started doing this. Um, Any books besides the one that you you mentioned? uh, I know that you mentioned that you had a book. I'm going to make sure I link that in the description box as well. That's on Amazon. What's the name of that book? How to buy a hotel. How to buy really simple. How to and buy a hotel. And you know what? Actually, in the book, I have a, a a webinar on how to. It shows you how to analyze a hotel deal twenty minutes or less. Look at that! Look at that! Oh man, that's even better. So, make sure you check out that book. And are there any other book recommendations that you recommend our listeners read in order to be able to to uh, fill their brains with more information? No, I think that's a good start because I don't want folks to get overwhelmed. That's mm-hmm. a good start. And then that way, once you understand the fundamentals and the foundation, then you can go from there. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. I love that. So with that being said, um, hotel ownership is definitely is a, it's a different animal than owning regular real estate. I, I see a lot of people starting to convert from apartments into hotels literally making uh um they're renovating apartment buildings 
into hotels and vice versa. I even see it the other way around as well. Some people are taking hotels and turning them into apartments. That's a that's a pretty hot play right now. But the whole point is this is real estate. This is business and uh, this is monopoly in real life. If you want to grow, if you want to make real money in real estate and take your business to another level, this is how you do it. Any last words for our listeners at all? No, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much, uh, Jamil, for having me on your show. And for the future hotel owners out there, I cannot wait to check into your hotel. So don't forget about little old me when you check in, when, when, once you buy your first hotel. I want to be there at the grand opening. I love it. I love it. And you gave me a different perspective on hotels like the Economy Lodge. Um, so that might be a good one to purchase on the first one. Super rates and things like that. It's a start. And then you mm-hmm. grow from there. So I love that. That's Western too. That's another good one. Yeah, Best Western is actually a pretty decent, um, pretty decent brand, and they've been making some some uh, some strides over the last five years or so. Really renovating their hotels this is a pleasant stay. I've stayed yeah. in one, um, not too long ago, and I actually I was pleasantly surprised with it. So mm-hmm. um, I think that um, that's actually a really is that a good one to start with as well. That's another good one. So Best Western, without going too much in detail, but think of the other brands that I mentioned as mm-hmm. banks and think of Best Western as a credit union. It's more, it has more of a ah, membership model. Mm-hmm. Good yep. way to look at that. From like an ownership that. perspective, yeah. Got it, got it. So mm-hmm. like I said, guys, there's, there's, you know, look, we're still talking about more information, right? There's a lot to cover. Make sure you check out Devon's book. Make sure you hop on that podcast. Uh, that, webinar as well make sure you listen to this podcast again because uh, some of this stuff might go over your head you don't want to miss it appreciate you hopping on the line today and uh, looking forward to seeing you guys on the next one peace